Hey guys, Buddy Vintage here. I uh, just wanted to do a quick video on um, M1938 dismounted leggings. Uh, I have two versions to show you. Uh, I have the shortened version, which would have been done in the field, uh, and I have the full version. These are both 3R, and I'll show you the markings after. Uh, these are also early patterns where you have this horseshoe looping, is all what I'm just gonna call it. So it's looped just in little U's versus the later pattern. Um, was more zigzag uh, the way it was set up and I'll show you both those but first I want to show you kind of the standard way to um, to put them on okay so I have my rough outs here now these are boondockers um, the way you can tell is uh, that the rough outs uh, should have a rivet uh, but still these work for showing you the uh, the example uh, as everybody knows with boots uh, hard to come by these days with good repros um, okay, so what you should have, if you've done it right, the final product should have this piece at the bottom connected and tied in. I'll show you how to do that. I'm showing you why that is important. It's because the lace should always go to the outside of the boot. Okay. And literally, you take the boot, and I'm thinking of the best way to show you this, and you put it through get that down through there, get the lace through there, and already you'll see you're pretty much ready to go. I didn't have to really undo anything or go to too much trouble. And now as you can see, my boot is now ready to more or less lace where I can take all the slack at the bottom that's done up. So that's the most important part I believe is getting this bottom part right the first time and now I can pull this over loop it up there get some tension and then loop uh, the next one here as well now obviously you want it nice and tight so um, I'll do one after and show you but like now you see it's nice and tight I pull the next one get it nice and tight and obviously this is way different when you're putting them on, obviously. And you just keep going up the boot. Uh, each one will go over. So it'll basically look like this when you're done, okay? So this is the best way in my opinion to do them because realistically you don't have to untie them that much and go to too much trouble. And then when you're done with the boot, you slacken all this down again to the bottom you have all this extra and you can slide your boot out again. So it's nice and easy to put on and off. So I'm just gonna show you that once more and I'm doing this with my left boot, which is kind of playing mind tricks with me. I also just want to show you maybe the markings while I have it open. So that one's actually 1941 dated, uh, 3R. Um, so it's an early one. And then again, I'm going to put this string under the boot, okay, maybe I'll show you upside down, it's a little bit hard to do this, so put the string and this, you can undo this too if you want, uh, if it's just easier, uh, I sometimes do it, sometimes don't, and I pull this over the end of the boot, and this always goes right underneath and between the heel uh, and the rest of the boot. That way the inside of your legs, because those are the ones that are potentially touching, you don't want them to get hooked into each other, uh, but the outside of the boot has the, um, has the lace. And now you're ready to lace yourself up. Okay, so how do we do that? I'm gonna show you first uh, a finished product in detail, both in the shortened and the lengthened. And then after that, I will show you actually how to do it raw from the beginning. Okay, so this is what your legging should look like. Um, so basically you start at the bottom on the tab end where the hooks are. And you always want to keep these hidden because you obviously don't want a bunch of exposed uh, lace out. So I keep that in the inside. So you start there, tie this off, and then you'll feed it through here all the way to the other side, go in from the back and then start to the front. And then literally it's up and down and up and down. Pretty simple right there. 
And then when you get to the top, that's kind of the tricky part. The top goes in, and then this one's a little bit simpler uh, because this is a cut down legging, so it doesn't have the extra eyelets that a full legging would have. And I've just tied it off right there. And that way um, I've adjusted it to kind of the, the length that I need to be able to pull it out uh, to get my boot on. And then that way this doesn't get fed back through and you have to start all over again if you take off your legging too aggressively. Okay, so that's what a short one should look like. The full one should look like this. Uh, same thing at the bottom where it's on the hook side, tied off at the back and fed through the front here, all the way at the top. And then when you get to the top, that's the tricky part that a lot of people have. It should look like this, where you'll actually, at the very last one, you go out the front, goes out the front, connects to here and goes in the back. That way, when you do it up, this piece is nice and hidden and you don't have any issues after. So this is nice and hidden on the inside, um, right in there. And you can tie it off there as well. Okay, so let's do it from the start because I have a legging that I need to actually do. Um, and I haven't done this in a while, so bear with me. So legging, it kind of depends. Usually there'll be kind of like uh, only one side actually has the lace. Um, and these are all originals, by the way. Uh, I don't really love repro leggings because I find them really bulky. Um, kind of discolored. So if I can find an original in 3R, I do. This one's beautifully marked. This one's uh, 1942 dated. As you can see, it's always a date code down there. And that's uh, a pretty, pretty nice marking there. Uh, actually the biggest I've ever seen. So first I'm gonna take uh, the waxed end, the laced end, uh, cause that's gonna be a lot easier to feed. And I'm gonna go through this first eyelet at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this first eyelet. I'm gonna pull it all the way through. So I'm coming out. And then of course, I have to tie off this end. Otherwise, it's just gonna come right through. So let's do that and tie it off. You just make one simple loop. You can get all fancy if you want to. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra uh, just in case, but you don't want too much because then it'll start hanging out the bottom of your boot. Uh, and being all messy. Okay, great. So now that we have that, I can now bring myself across, and it's not rocket science, I'm gonna bring myself across and go into the first eyelet. There is an eyelet here as well, but that's more for the rivet. Um, I'm sure there is a way you could use it. I'm sure, you know, if you wanted to, I'm sure you could go through, you know, the back here and then through here if you wanted to. Um, Again, I just don't see the purpose of really doing that. Um, so I just don't. Um, but like I said, I can imagine the USGI in the field had a million different ways of doing things. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go through uh, the back side first of here. Okay, so now When this is truly done up, it should be nice and hidden and I don't have any excess. And that's when you can, I'm not gonna do it this way, but you can literally loop it and then loop it back through here. So it's pretty self-explanatory how that works um, up and down. So now I've made my first loop, okay? And these don't always line up nicely when you're doing it. So you have to kind of always imagine that they are. <laughs> Um, so I made my first loop and I can do that there. So you can see nicely it's already working. Now earlier I talked about the zigzag pattern. So let's show you what that looks like. Um, so some boots, uh, I should say some leggings. So you can see here, it's kind of obvious, at least to me, that um, each hook has got corresponding two of these. Um, so you can do it that way. You can also do it where you now put it through. I'll get you guys a little bit closer here, a lot closer. Probably should have had that from the beginning. You can put it through to the back and you'll see these zigzag styles, um, as well. 
Now this makes it so you have now two loops, right? One here and one for the next one. Now this is an early style, so as you can see, I'm, I guess I can kind of make it work. You know, if I, if I pull it up, uh, but that's not working for my style, but that's a zigzag style you'll find in leggings that are definitely dated like from 1944 and stuff like that. And the OD7 leggings will require that zigzag style. And I call it zigzag just because it's like, it, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of twirled around as you go. So you twirl through rather than just looping and making that horseshoe pattern like I showed you. So a lot of you guys will probably have to do that zigzag pattern which is simply what I'm gonna do with this early legging is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it through here and just simply do over, under, over, under like this. So let's just do that really quick. This can happen super quick. You don't need really, this is the quickest part. Now let's pretend I had a zigzag legging. I would start to go, I would start to loop around the big thing that you're now starting to see if I'm doing a zigzag legging, which is a later style, it's a pretty obvious difference where I have these ones an over under, and these ones are now over the edge of the canvas. Um, and I think that was just to reduce the number of, um, the number of eyelets, the number of hooks needed. I don't know why they did it, why they changed it. It is, I guess, kind of easier to pull this over than trying to get this one pulled over. I'm not sure why they did it, but so let's continue with the over under. Uh, so over under, over under. Sorry, now this is boring. I'm sure I can speed up this video, but I'm not interested in uh, all the editing aspects. And at least you get an idea of each move and how it goes in case you get lost in between. Um, it's also important to get the right lace. If your leggings didn't come with lace, these are fairly thin. Um, you know, it's hard to find color to match, but the main thing is the length. You have to make sure it's okay on these. Okay. So this is where we get to the hard part. Now I'm at the top. What do I do? You know, a lot of guys are like, well, do you just put it through here? Or, you know, there's so many eyelets to goof around with. I basically have three eyelets now to try and figure out what to do with at the top. So what I do is you go through the back of the, the top one at the end of your over-unders. You're going to pull it all the way over to this eyelet. Okay. And the purpose of this, it keeps your legging nice and together at the top. Because once you've done your last one here, realistically, you have no more, nothing holding this top together. So if you didn't have it, it could just sort of split apart and look pretty sloppy. And if you try to just use this eyelet, you can line these two eyelets up uh, and just get rid of this, like, to be quite honest. Um, the only reason you wouldn't do that is because it would mess up your over-under you would have to go through the top of this and through this other eyelet to really make a match up. Otherwise you have to go behind and, and that isn't really ideal either. Um, so what I do is you go over to this far for this eyelet, pull it in. Great. And then the final eyelet in the back is kind of just your, your keeper, um, where you keep all the slack. So you're going to put it through the back here if I can find it. And then this is where you're going to tie it off. Um, I'm not sure how much length I need um, yet because I haven't test fitted these, but I'll give it a, a lot of slack for myself um, that way. So what you should have at the end is this. Um, again, not really ideal that you have all this extra, but the idea is when it is all tightened up, That that is usually hidden anyways. So now I have a nice, have a nice tight um, legging at the very top now. That's the whole purpose to that tying style that I just showed you. Um, and again,
again, this is tough because it's so, it's so loose right now. Um, but I'll show you the type of one after. I'm sorry, I know this video is a little bit long, but it shows you everything now. So now your top will be nice and pulled together at all points. And you can see this lines up very nicely um, and looks great. So your end product should be this. And like I said, you're gonna have this extra, that's just part of it. And you just tuck that back in the legging. Um, you know, it's, it's nice and hidden in there. You never have to see it. So now your finished product should be this um, with this hook style. Like I said, the later ones will be zigzags and I showed you that. And same thing, that'll leave you um, extra at the bottom, which I haven't done here, but if I now, now, great, okay, now I'm going to go reenacting or whatever or you know, set these up now. How do I make sure that I can put these on? Because right now, they're super tight at the bottom. Uh, I, I tied everything off here. Right? So I really, I have no way to even get my boot through there. That's why you have to slack in it to the other end. So you're gonna put all the slack down to the bottom. Okay. Once you have your slack down to the bottom, voila, there is your extra thing. You can now put your boot on. Um, here we go, so this is my right boot. So the way to always tell is the buckle should always be to the front of the boot. It shouldn't be on the back a uh, bit, otherwise you have it backwards. So if I try to put this on, I know that's not right because you see the buckles on the back side. So again, um, it really doesn't matter which way I put it on, but I'm just gonna do it from the front because that's kind of logical. Again, this is so loose right now, I don't even have to worry about it. I can bring my strap around and do this up. Okay, and then I can loosen, get rid of all my slack now. I'm sorry, I know my hands are really in the way, but it's kind of hard to do without, without it. And then I can get rid of my slack at the bottom. And now it's been, now it's pulled over nicely, ready to go. And then this piece I've always had difficulties with. Um, so realistically, you want it to grip this, these steel teeth down there. So just put it through and then literally they should just kind of pop up through like that. Um, if they can't quite reach, chances are you just have a bad repro boot or, you know, a bad legging. I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad, it's just ill-fitting. Uh, I've had repro boots that won't take original leggings because the boot is much taller, wider. Uh, all the all the ratios are off compared to the true service boot or the rough out boot. So again, you just take this bottom one, and then you have to pull this, you pull these teeth up to the top, and put it underneath the teeth. Pull it through, and then put it in. There, and now I'll just kind of do up the whole legging just to kind of show you, because like why not? This video is already so long. Um, and you can adjust it all later. Obviously, I don't have my leg in this, so it's not going to look the best um, or most natural when it does happen. Um, but you can see they all start to match up here and you de-slack into the top again. And then everything. And now my little extra thing that I showed you from before, I can pull that over and everything and that should fit nicely obviously a little bit looser just because there's no leg in there, obviously. So now I have a nicely done legging, obviously nicely without a foot in it. Um, and and that, once I put it on, then I would tighten all these. I'd go from top to bottom again and get these nice and tight. So the, um, 
the slack all matches in it. So as you can see, now I can go through again and tighten it up again a little bit more uh, here as well. Just so, you know, everybody's not calling me Farby for leaving them all up like that. But, um, and you know, if you have a bigger ankle or something that you can do that. So 3R is three regular size three um, that you'll see. That, in my opinion, is, you know, kind of the modern guy size. Uh, a lot of smaller guys have no problem with the 2R. A 1R is really for, like, you know, a true chicken leg. Uh, 4R, I've only seen a few originals out in the wild. If you're a bigger guy, that's fine, too, to use those. Uh, the important thing to note is that, um, so that's a little bit better. The important thing to note is that with the uh, Navy ones, or I should say the Navy contracts, but the U.S. Marine Corps ones, there's always an NXSX code on it. I'll see if I actually have something over here with one. Uh, I thought I had something with a, a code. But anyways, uh, they're, they're only sized. Um, I think that they start usually at three. They're three, four, five, six. So a Navy, sorry, a US size 2R equals kind of a, in my opinion, uh, a Marine Corps 4. And if Army 3R equals a Marine Corps 5 and almost into a 6, because I can barely even fit into a 6. Honestly, I'm a 7. Uh, so I'd say a 3 is more of a 7. And then an Army 4 would be like, yeah, a 7 or even an 8, which I've never actually seen. So the Marine Corps ones are really, really much smaller uh, in general. And they don't have the length uh, denotation. Um, again, why is there an R? Uh, there's an L on some of the leggings and they're, I think, just extra long. And the number of eyelets I usually count are, sorry, a uh, number of hooks, two, four, six, eight on these. You'll run into ones with seven, ones with nine. My shortened ones have two, four, six, seven, because they're shortened down. So you, they've cut off the top one and they've cut it off there. Um, so you'll see different variations. I won't get too hung up as long as it's wartime dated. Uh, you know, I wouldn't get too hung up on the, on the amount of hooks and things like that. But basically I think eight or nine is the proper number to have on a true, um, basic, um, issued legging dismounted 1938. Uh, and while I'm here, I'll just see if I have, you know, my quarter, quartermaster catalog and see if they actually have the leggings in there so I can get you the proper nomenclature here, but they probably have removed that by this point uh, because this is a 46 dated one and they were getting out of leggings. But yeah, there you go. No, there's there is leggings. Okay. So M1938 uh, dismounted. These are OD7 uh, because this is now 1946 dated. Um, so nice and interesting. Okay. Hope you guys learned something.